Hello, welcome back to Breakfast with John Kay and Sarah Campbell. Just after half past six on a chilly Monday morning and that cold snap after all that wet weather means mm. one big problem in particular, doesn't it? Potholes. Yeah, uh, more than one big problem, apparently. They are multiplying and uh, Nina has all the details. Yes, good morning. I tell you what, everyone has a pothole tail, don't they? Even me. Look, they're getting everywhere, aren't they? Even the BBC Breakfast <laughs> Studio. Imagine a world in which you could just make them disappear just like that. It would be nice, wouldn't it? But even if the BBC Magic Digger were real, it wasn't, by the way, there'd be a lot of recovery work to be done. Now, sites like this will have literally stopped you in your tracks more than once. They're often caused when water enters holes, freezes and then expands, and so it can be a nightmare, particularly at this time of year. At best, they're a bit annoying. At worst, they're expensive and can be very dangerous. Now, the AA says it dealt with almost 632,000 pothole-related incidents last year alone. Now, that's their highest recorded number in five years. And the RAC says it attended more than 5,000 breakdowns in the final three months of 2023 alone. That's the highest number they've seen in that period for six years. The newly formed Pothole Partnership told us they estimate that damage to vehicles caused by potholes cost almost half a billion pounds last year. Now, the government told us it's investing more than eight billion pounds to tackle potholes and improve road surfaces imagine if we could smooth the roads ahead for good can we dare to dream well harriet bradshaw has been looking at some of the tech being developed to do just that looking into the issue of potholes there's a problem which scientists say will only get worse with the effects of climate change but some of the solutions to this everyday issue are coming from science from testing sensors in our roads to investigating 3d printed fixes and the materials that can adapt to temperature changes. Engineers are at the forefront of the race to repair potholes. Our roads are either made out of concrete or asphalt. The majority of our roads are asphalt, although a lot of the damage in both starts with cracks. Then you get water ingress, you get freezing. If you get overnight freezing, water expands. Mm. And then when it thaws, it will shrink, it will reduce in volume. And that change in the volume will basically develop this crack into a pothole. In this laboratory at the University of Cambridge, scientists are already researching materials to build resilience into the structure of roads. And uh, what we're doing is we're trying to enhance these materials through uh, you know, their environmental impact or uh, performance by adding things like fibres and uh, also maybe trying to make them self-heal. So is it possible to have self-healing potholes then? Yeah, the, the, the aim is to uh, eventually have no potholes, but that maybe the, the road would heal itself. But whilst it's all very well knowing what materials are best to use, you still need to know where the cracks are to fix them, like pinpointing a needle in a haystack, unless... So I'm going to get immersed in some pothole data now. Right now, modern cars have the ability to capture the data all around them uh, with video, with accelerometers, with mini weather stations. These engineers are developing a way of using the anonymized car sensor data to create a thorough digital map of our roads, including the size of cracks and where they are. It's so problems can be pinpointed in real time quickly, so repairs can be focused and issues watched. And eventually... Oh, let's say you can find a pothole or crack on the road surface, so you can fill in those cracks using the robot automatically. This is a £17 million project at the University of Cambridge, a third funded by industry with government investment too. But is it enough? With climate change, if we're expecting um, more extreme weather events, whether that's uh, freeze-thaw cycles, um, more extreme wind events and, and rainfall events, um, these can have an impact on the rate at which our roads deteriorate. There is optimism, though. Do you see a future where we might not have potholes? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Councils say they share the concerns of all road users and are calling for more regular and consistent funding, whilst the government says it's investing an extra £8.3 billion into fixing the problem. Harriet Bradshaw, BBC News. Wow, a future without potholes. Wouldn't that be lovely? Um, Self-healing ones sound brilliant, but as we heard in Harriet's report, they may be a way off.
In the meantime, the government told us today that they're launching a crackdown on inefficient roadworks, so they'll fine companies found to be inefficient for slow progress, and they'll be using that revenue to fund road resurfacing.